Hello and welcome everyone to this month's Tips and Tricks webinar where we will be presenting today Paperless OCR. My name is Priscilla Gutierrez and I'm one of the trainers here at Paperless Environments and I'll be guiding you through uh, this morning's presentation and then I'll be handing it over to one of our in-house experts, Bruce, who is going to be showing you an in-depth look into Paperless OCR and how this could benefit you and your company and your workflows to make it a more efficient process. And here is my brief description of what paperless OCR can do for you. So paperless OCR offers a way to systematically scan your documents and extract key information from them. Um, for example, your AP invoice documents. Um, so we can set up templates and some configurations that would allow us to extract data from your invoice image to populate some of your invoice entry fields, which will result in time saved. And so that's what exactly we can do here. And we're gonna be seeing some examples of that shortly. But this is the paperless OCR workflow. So the workflow would begin with the scanned image. So all of you already right now on the call are probably already using the paperless system. So you're very comfortable with this workflow that you see before you today. This is not changing any of the current steps that you take except for keyed in entries. And so it's just taking away from the fields that you would have to key into. So you're not having to roll out a whole new process, in other words. This is going to work very well alongside what you're already currently doing without disrupting that process. So you begin with the scanned image and you would capture it into the queue. And so the capture process or method of your choice, whatever it is that you're using today, you could continue using that same capture method. We're going to be giving you a few examples later on of some of the capture methods that work very, very well with uh, paperless OCR that we've seen lots of customers utilize. And it just, again, saves you time and saves you steps. And so we'll be going through that. After you capture those into the queue, that's when the OCR process runs and starts to collect the data from the image. That data is, is collected and then populates the corresponding invoice entry fields. And then you process the invoice entry just like you usually would. So you can see here, it's a very familiar workflow. It's what you're already doing. All it's doing is taking away from that data entry step that your processor is having to do today manually by keying into those fields. Paperless OCR will take that step out and replace it with automatically populating the data into those invoice entry fields. Why would you need paperless OCR? Well, it's easy. The less information that you're required to key in manually, the greater efficiency, the higher the volume that you can process the less likely there are to be miskeyed strokes if we're extracting this data. And so there's lots and lots of reasons why to look into paperless OCR to see how it would benefit you, but this is time saved. If you have a accounts payable team and maybe your volume has increased and your team hasn't increased, maybe you don't, you don't wanna have to add another AP clerk you don't wanna add another processor. And maybe you don't need to. Maybe we need to just make the process a little more efficient. This might be a way to do that. We can take away some of these steps, which in turn saves time, which means there's more volume that can then be processed. And so these are just a few reasons why you might need it. So what kind of data can paperless OCR capture? Here's just a few examples. We can capture things like vendor, invoice number, invoice date, invoice total, PO. Those are just a few examples of some of the information that we can take during this OCR process and populate corresponding fields. And here's an example of you know, how that would happen. And so we would map, we would say, this is my invoice number. This is my invoice date. And it will take that information and populate those fields. 
as you can see here, you can see the corresponding information coming off of the invoice image itself into the corresponding field. That's what you're going to see happen during that OCR process when it runs. And now we're going to take a more in-depth look and see paperless OCR in action. And here to do that for us is our in-house expert, Bruce Rush, and he is our director of OCR engagements, and he is going to be guiding us through that in-depth look into paperless OCR. So help me welcome Bruce. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining today. So this should look familiar to everybody, and this is obviously an AP flow queue. And so paperless OCR can um, OCR invoices that are dropped into an AP flow queue. We can even go directly into what we call index documents if they are not invoices and don't go through the AP flow process. And we can also do it that way. And I'll show you some examples of that with other doc types uh, in a little bit. But let's say, for example, Southern Pipe and Supply is one of your vendors and they send you an invoice. Those invoices can come in many ways. Typically these days, invoices are coming in almost always or the bulk of the time. When I talked, I, we've done probably um, dozens and dozens of uh, paperless OCR implementations over the last year. And I would say most of the implementations, the customers receive their invoices from their vendors via email. That's almost always the common. It's like 80, 90% of their invoices, if not a, you know, almost 100, come in that way, 100%. So we'll talk about getting stuff in directly via email, but there's other ways that you know how to get documents into a queue, right? So you can always just add them to the queue this way where you select it and then you go out to a file folder and bring it in and like we'd say that one and add. So in this case, if we had done that and we brought this document, this Southern Supply, uh, Southern Pipe and Supply invoice into the queue, it would go through the OCR process and I'll take us through a live, an actual doing the same invoice. I'll do that in a second here, but I kind of want to show you as a frame of reference, what it's going to look like and what it's going to return. So it's going to go up into the cloud and it's our paperless OCR cloud, and then it's going to return the results and so you're going to go into the same screen that you're used to doing, which is the invoice entry screen. And when that pops up, you'll notice that in this case, we called Southern Pipe and Supply in our internal demo table for the vendor master, uh, vendor ID 41. So it's what it's doing is it's taking a look at how the vendor name is printed on the invoice and it tries to do an exact match with what you have for that vendor in your master vendor table for the vendor name. And if for some reason those don't link up, we give you ways and tricks and tips on how to um, improve that matching process. So one of the things we're trying to do if possible is let the system find the vendor ID based on the vendor name just based on the data that's not printed on the invoice, as well as the data, matching it to the data for the vendor name in your master vendor table. So the beauty of that is you don't have to train every vendor's layout for that vendor name to find it. And that saves you time. So that's really neat. Uh, once it gets under, you know, once it learns and it's been trained, it could do it. But if we can do it automatically, we'd prefer to let the system do it. The other thing you'll notice here is it found the invoice number. So in this case, the invoice number is like the third line here and underneath the invoice block of detail or of data at the header. And it put that in there. If we step down here, we have the invoice total uh, is down at the bottom. And it's grabbing that invoice total from the bottom down here. Uh, we have the invoice date and it pulled the invoice date from up here. And we also trained it in this case to look for the PO number. And we just put it in a field that we that's already there called field PO number, but we can call it different things that I'll talk about in a second. So with that, we have all the, what we call the invoice starter pack fields. And those are the five fields that we tend to do with every invoice implementation. We call it the starter pack because everybody typically will start with that. And over, I've been with Paperless now for over three and a half years and done many OCR implementations, 
And what we found is that our customers can get a significant benefit just by being able to OCR those five header fields and save your AP team, the processors, from having to enter those manually. So when that comes in, it it is kind of starts you off with what you normally do from a blank screen. This has those five fields, and then you just finish and do your line. Uh, add the lines for the coding lines, and then you send it off to the rest of the flow. So how does the data get in here? Okay, so if we were to go up into the cloud, and when we pass the data up into the cloud, the image comes in, we pass the image up, and the data comes back is really what I meant to say. And so if you look here, now we're in the cloud. This is what the OCR screen looks like in the cloud. And this is what it, when you want, need to, tr what we call teach the system or train it. So it learns where to find data for some reason it missed. It, this is the screen you go in to show it how to do this. So you don't have to be uh, an expert. It used to be years ago, decades ago. I've been doing this for a little over 20 years in OCR. And it used to be, and many of you might even know because you've looked at OCR from way back when, it used to be that OCR was really geared to what they called fixed forms. And that is the form always looked the same. And if you moved anything, like if you moved, in this case, the invoice number for this particular vendor over to the right uh, an inch, then you'd have to create a whole new what they called the template. And, and so templates got a bad name because you would always have to constantly be updating them and keeping versions of them. And then about 15 years ago, a new technology came out with OCR that allowed it to do semi-structured forms. And that's really what an invoice is. It's semi-structured. It's structured in the sense that we're looking for the same fields, like the vendor information, invoice number, invoice date, invoice total, in this case, purchase order. But depending on the vendor, the layout of where that is can be in different places. So it's variable. And the system is smart enough to know that and to try and figure out where it should look on its own. So we've had customers that might be like in this case where we were given this layout, uh, this vendor's invoice layout, and the system got all the data, all five fields out of the box, didn't have to do anything. On the other hand, it might have come out that it um, needed to have something trained. So if we were to step through here, you notice that right now the cursor is over here and this is the value. This is the OCR value it found. We are doing the database lookup based on an exact match of that name to the vendor table that we're using based on what, this is what it found on the invoice. And then based, if that's in the vendor table, it passes back the vendor ID. The invoice number, you'll notice here, it, it shows up with under there uh, in red with the X, but really it's the field above it where it's grabbing from that little green field where it says 6901089. So that's the invoice number. That's where it's finding that. The invoice date, it's finding it there. Invoice total, it's finding it at the bottom. PO number, it's finding it there. Now here's an interesting thing. One of the things we can do is rules. So we call them field rules. And in this case, the customer wanted us to populate the vendor name because it, in the description field, that's just the way they wanted us to do it. I have some that say, I want the vendor ID with a dash followed by the invoice date. And we go, fine, we can do that. So those are called rules. And so we do a, we can do what's called field formatting rules that we might change how like the date looks and use a certain format. Or we can do like in this case, where we're merging a couple different fields together and put it in a description field. So we have a lot of options with that. But let's say, for example, in this case, you didn't want that bottom number for the invoice total. You wanted this one here right above it where it says total, essentially like the subtotal before the tax. All you do is you click and see how it changed the number over here from the, the other number, it changed it to 120. That's essentially how you train. You just put your cursor in the field and you say, where are you finding it at? Here's where I want you to pick it. And then when you hit the save button, it will then go, oh, this is added to my list of vendors that I need to, the cloud will say I need to train on those. And you do that about seven to 10 times per specific vendor layout that's missing and it gets it automatically going forward. 
So the beauty of that is once they're trained, so they can, sometimes you don't need to do any training. And if you do need to train, it's done very simple just by point and click. You don't have to be a master tech technical guru to learn the system. It's just point and click, all the stuff you're used to doing with Windows. So coming back here, the results then, as we said, is coming up in the, uh, uh, the invoice entry screen. So what I'd like to do now is take the same invoice, but this time we're gonna do it live, right? So I'm gonna get out of here and we're gonna add the queue. And we're gonna take the same one, which is here, it's out there stored away in some samples for us. And I wanna show you some things. So it comes into the queue and the first thing you'll notice is there's no dot. Notice how we have these green dots and here there's no dots. And so that means the document has been added to the paperless OCR queue, but it hasn't been uploaded to the cloud yet. And then about every five seconds or so, we're, we're refreshing this queue to say, okay, what's the status now? And if you notice now, it's yellow. Yellow means it's up in the cloud being OCR'd. And if we were to click on this little, I, this little question mark here, it tells you, hey, this document's being processed in the cloud. Do you, you know, you can wait or do you, for some reason you want to move forward manually, you can go ahead. So if you click yes here, it would, it would kind of disengage it from what's being done in the cloud and you would just do it like you normally do. But in this case, we're going to kind of wait a little bit and, and let it do its thing. So you don't have to do one at a time. You can do many at one time, bring them in here. But the assumption is when you bring them into the OCR queue, it's a single invoice document. So a single invoice attachment. And I'll go into some more details about that in a second. So with that, if you notice now it's green. So green means it found the va OCR values. It does not mean they're correct. It just means it found something that it thought was one of those five values we were looking for. Now we're gonna go in and we're gonna open it up like we normally do with the new invoice button or double clicking, but you're gonna notice something a little different that's gonna happen here and watch for it. So the first thing it's telling you is we, we have a little flag set because we had customers that said, hey, can you check for dupes? If I've already, if a customer sends me an invoice that's already been processed and we go, yeah, we can. So if you look here, OCR had already grabbed the vendor ID or the vendor information with the ID and the invoice number. So the system knows without you doing anything, hey, this document has already been processed. Do you wanna continue? In this case, we're gonna say, okay, we're gonna move forward, right? Now, here's the next thing that's really, really cool. So if you remember, we had that PO number. We've enabled what we call the PO number quick lookup functionality. So not every ERP system, not every accounting system has it, but certain ones do, and the one I'm using here has this capability. And what it does is it takes the OCR value that was returned for the purchase order number. It does a lookup in the purchase order table. And if there are already, the, and it brings back all the lines that are associated with that purchase order number. And so from that, you can go in here and start saying, finish off your coding. And you can essentially say, add to, um, add to the invoice and it would do it automatically here. If you notice it just, you didn't have to key it in. You didn't have to add the line manually. It just says, yeah. And if that's the one you want, there it is. And if you, you can finish your comparison and then it'll do all the rest of the, I'm gonna make a full screen because there's a lot of data here. And so it populated the line, the coding line. It knew it was a PO. It, so it gave the right type. It assigned the PO number and all the other things that you have pre-configured for a purchase order line. And in this case, it filled at this level, the description of the, at the line level, which it's bringing back uh, from the PO lookup, what the description is on the PO for that particular PO line. So it saves you a lot of time from having to manually key that in or even manually select it. And so from there, then you can then go route it and do other things for approval. 
But that's one of the key things that uh, we had people wanting us to do is be able to automate this. And so in addition to saving your time with not having to enter those five fields, vendor, invoice number, invoice date, invoice total, field PO, and in this case, the header description, you actually got some time saving in that it pre-populated the line selections with for all those um, line, all the PO lines items for that PO number. And if you want, you can just, it, we automatically say, bring them all back because it's easier in many cases just to turn off the ones you don't want. You can just unselect from that previous screen we were in. Okay, so now let's talk about a little bit more about how to get data into the queue because this ends up being a big deal and there's a huge opportunity for time saving with it. And you might you may be doing it already and maybe not. So what you saw me do is I did it manually by doing the add to queue. We open up a browse screen and then we select it and bring it in. You could also drag and drop. You could also push it to this queue from another queue. And there's times when that comes into play. But I'm going to go into a Word doc and I'm going to show you some things that we do to automatically set up uh, the, the, the paperless, what we call import, auto import. And so if we were to, and it's actually the way you get to it is if you're, you click on the capture, you'll notice here, there's an importer module with all this stuff in it, right? So we take us into here, but let me, and then if you click a new one, you'll see a list. And these are all the types of ways you can get do imports. And the one we're gonna go, I'm gonna go into more detail right now is this email import. And so I have a, an example in a Word doc with screen snaps that basically takes us through these screens. So let me just do that real quick for you. And I'm gonna switch over to my Word document. So if you're gonna do email importing and leverage that, let's say you're the Acme Enterprises company and you have your AP uh, team gets, it tells vendors to send invoices, email invoices to the AP at acmeenterprises.com. So one of the things you have to do is you currently, if you get emails in that way, and I'm sure you all do, you got to what I call is triaging. So what you have to do typically when you get emails with invoices attached to the emails, you have to triage every single email and say, oh, what do I want to do with this one? Do I need to have somebody take a look at this and you know have that person look and process that particular invoice because it's from a vendor they normally do? Or is it not even an invoice at all? It's something else. So you have to route it to somebody else. So what we do is we, we would say set up at least four different subfolders in underneath your accounting systems, the, the inbox, right? And we call one paperless OCR single invoice import one paperless OCR multi-invoice import, and I'll explain that in a second. And then we have two others that are kind of whether it was successfully imported and processed into the queue or whether something aired out, because you want to know all those. So now let's step through what goes on here. So if we dig into this a little bit more, we'll say we're going to do one that is paperless OCR single invoice import. So the first thing you need to do is you would, and you can do this through Outlook or you can do it through your email server like Office 365, but you get to what they call our email rules. And there's a place in there, this is using the Outlook screen just so you can kind of get a frame of reference. And when you click that button, it pops up this screen that takes you in and you can create a new one. So I clicked the button and said, hey, I'm gonna create a new one. And, it's, and it has some predefined kind of scenarios and what I have other customers have done or what other customers have done, they've set up their invoice to say, hey, we know when it comes into this single invoice import, it was from vendors that are what I call the good vendors. They always send um, invoices that are attachments, but it's always a single attachment per invoice. So that means it can be immediately imported into the paperless OCR queue for processing. And if you look, here's the rule they set up. 
they say in the subject line, there is a word that says invoice in it. So they go, if there's an invoice in the word um, or the invoice word in the subject line and it has an attachment, we want to move it to the paperless OCR single invoice import folder. So this is not has nothing to do with paperless. This is your email system. So it's Office 365 Outlook and all that kind of stuff. This is rules that you set up and you just start looking to see what kind of rules apply. And so I had a customer that was doing something and they go, is there any way we can automate this so we don't have to drag and drop? And I go, yeah, just tell me if there's a certain criteria. And they go, oh yeah, we always know if it has invoice in the subject line or in the word invoice in the file attachment name. And if obviously if there's an attachment, we're gonna send it into OCR. So I said, cool, just set up a rule and we'll put it into a PO, we'll call it POCR, single invoice import, and then it'll be done, right? So let me go through then with another um, scenario. Sometimes you might say, um, well, this is a big, thick word. Sometimes you might say, hey, I don't want to always go into the single invoice import folder, I have, when I get something from a specific vendor, I wanna go into the person's queue that they work that's assigned to work that vendor because they're such a high volume vendor. So we go, no problem. We'll set up a special subfolder. You need to set up a special subfolder underneath this whole inbox, just like we did before and give it the vendor name. So we know that's what it is. In this case, HD supply. And then we're gonna set up a different rule, right? And this one's saying, if it comes from purchasing at hdsupply.com and it has the word invoice in the subject or the body, in this case, the subject is what we would use and the attachment, it has an attachment, then move it into this queue. And then what we do on the paperless side, and here's the neat part, we go where I just was, we go under capture, we click the importer, you say it's an email import, and then you configure the import folder to look at that specific queue. Like in this case, we're showing it to go into the paperless OCR single invoice queue underneath the AP Acme Enterprises email address. And so it automatically comes in and then we say what queue to go to. So you might say, oh, we want this to go into the AP public queue or you, you go, no, we don't want to do that because some of those are not OCR. So you might say, okay, we just set up a special queue that we call the POCR you know, invoice queue. So we know everything that goes there. Or you might say, no, we're gonna link to the HD supply and we have a special queue with that operator, the AP processor's name, and we're gonna go into their queue because they have a special OCR queue that everything that goes into there gets OCR'd and it's their vendors. So that's kind of one of the key things you can do that I've talked to customers and they said, this has been a huge, huge time saving form. And so I bring that up now. This isn't something that if you're just doing normal uh, data entry stuff, you would probably have to reach out to your email administrator to, to kind of configure this, but you would probably give them the information on, hey, here are the rules I want you to apply. So that takes us back up into here, right? That takes us as I scroll, bear with me. You kind of determine what kind of rules make sense for you and how you want your subfolders set up. So now let me give you one other scenario because you're probably going, that sounds great, Bruce, but I have what, I, what Bruce calls naughty vendors, right? They're the naughty vendors that send you invoices as attachment, but they put multiple invoices in the same attachment. So you could have from them, you could have an attachment that says, here's your invoice, but it's really five invoices combined. So what we say in those cases, you create a rule and you do the same thing and you say, these vendors, when you get an invoice, you know, from them, an attachment, so it has an attachment, it has the vendor name, right, or vendor names, because you can have more than one, you say, we know this is one of the naughty vendors, so instead of going into the paperless OCR um, uh, single invoice import, we're going to just put them all into the multi-invoice import. And what we'll do in this case, when it's in the multi-invoice import, 
it will then be brought in to a non-OCRQ. So we'll go in and we'll set a paperless uh, import process, an email import, but we won't bring it into an, in, an OCRQ. We'll bring it into a non-OCRQ. And then I'm assuming you all know how to do this. Then you just split it, right? And you got all the splitting utility tools that we have, right? So you can split it manually because it might be one pages, two pages, three pages, whatever the number of invoices in there, however many pages they are. Or in some cases, you might say, hey, this, we know these guys, you know, always do a single uh, invoice, uh, single page invoices. So you can just set the splitter to say split every image in here as a single document and it'll split. So that's some of the ways that you can streamline your, uh, what we call the capture process to get stuff ready to be OCR. And there, so we can handle, we have a workflow for if there's multi, what I call the naughty vendors with their multi invoices, you can have single invoices where they're good vendors, know what they're doing. And then if you have specific vendors that you want to go to specific queues or assign to have it go to people, specific people's uh, OCR queue, you can do that as well. Okay. So that's that. Let me switch back now. And I'm going to go back into where I'm at. How are we doing time-wise? We got, we got some time. So what I'd like to do is just talk about a nut, some of the other doc types we can do. And, um, and I'm going to bring it up here. Let's see if I, if I go to home. And I close the screen. So you can see here, I have a list of some of the different doc types. Some of them were actually in the midst of working on like the Accord Certificate of Insurance form. And they have tons of data on those forms, if you're familiar with them, with much of check boxes and all that. So we're kind of in the midst of working on that. But I'd like to, we can do purchase order and we can do AP check. I'm going to bring back, uh, I'm going to do a retrieve and bring up the data, what it looks like for AP checks. So if I come in here, and and we go, I'm going to do a search and I'm going to bring back those um, AP checks. Let's see. Oh, I clicked the wrong one. Sorry. Let's try it again. That's better. So you can see here, I have three AP checks. And uh, in this case, they came in. In, in this particular scenario, we have coded um, the system in the cloud to OCR AP checks. And the assumption is they come in as multi-check um, files because that's a pretty common scenario. So in this case, we've hard-coded up in the cloud for it to split automatically. I know I said we just don't do it that way in invoices because the problem we have with invoices is they can be one page, two page, three pages. And when you try and auto split, you spend more time dealing with exceptions and it's worth the bother. And since we have a splitter module, we say for invoices, just do it in our splitter module. But with AP checks, it's very common that AP checks are a single page and you do the check run, you print it out and say, here's the check run that's been print out and you save it as a PDF that might have 25, 50, 100, 150, 200 some checks in it and they're all single page. So you don't want, so in that case we go, okay, well, we are able to handle that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this and you're gonna see the data. So we, that we're actually gonna be able to populate. So what we do is we come in here and we are basically just OCRing the check number here, right? This little value, this 10001, that's all we really are needing to OCR. And we know it's very common when you print out checks, you're printing them out just from one or two or three bank accounts. You might have more, but many times customers have, know what the bank account number is. So we pre-populate that when we bring the data in. So when I come in, up, oh, wrong thing, let me do this. Here's what I wanted. So if you notice here, we had the check number in green that we OCR'd. We had the bank account number that we pre-populated because in our system, this we just called it bank account number four, the ID. 
But what the system is configured to do, it's configured to backfill all the other information because it's in your system because you printed the check. You know what the vendor name is for that check number. You know, you know the number, the invoice number it applies to. All this other data was pre-populated. So it saves you from having to do all that manually. And so you can leverage backfilling. And when you know the, the training team, uh, Priscilla, and the team has configured your system and maybe however you're doing going forward, we can configure it so the backfills work based on minimal um, field values, index values, to get you what you need to make it unique. And in this case, all we have to do is provide the AP check number and the bank account value. And then that's unique. And they can then, the system knows where to get the rest of the data to backfill it. We do something very similar to this with PO numbers, right? Purchase orders. So in some cases you might be printing out, I have customers that really, it's even though the purchase orders are their own form, they want to be able to scan those in or get those into the system, not scanning, obviously. They, they print them out to a PDF get them into the system. And then they just want to OCR the uh, PO number. And based on that, they will backfill all the rest of the data for that purchase order. And that sets them up if for some reason they want to then do what's called a doc match. Some of you might be familiar with that and match it to the specific invoice that is um, that was used to um, fulfill that purchase. So kind of summarizing, Getting back into here, we can do different doc types. Our sweet spot and what we have found huge success with is invoices and uh, the five, what we call invoice starter pack fields. We can do others, but that's typically what we'll do. And then a lot of times customers will ask us, well, can you OCR the line items? We found that for our customers, almost the bulk of the time, if they're using purchase orders, what we find is they can just as easily take advantage of that quick PO, quick lookup functionality. And I had one guy that says, that's all I need. And he, he's gone forward with gangbusters, just doing it that way. We have a few other two that are doing it that way. And then there's other doc types we can do. If you have specific doc types that are really important to you, that we, you know, reach out to uh, the salesperson, reach out to the support team, reach out to the training team, and then we can investigate, you know, and kind of give you a sense for, you know, are those conducive for OCR? And, and that's it. That's everything I have for today. Thanks, Priscilla. Thank you, Bruce. And we do have a few questions if we have some time here to, uh, to answer. Okay. All right. So the first question we have coming in, um, and it's a very good question. They're asking, is this different from Abby Flexi Capture? Yes, it is. And in, in some respects, it's the same, right? Because I, and Abby Flexi Capture is a very powerful uh, OCR platform. So it's a completely separate product. It's like, um, it's like P Vault and AP Flow, right? It's a completely separate product from those. And so just like uh, P Vault and AP Flow, are separate from your ERP system, your accounting system, but we integrate with it. And the same way Abby was separate from, uh, you know, P Vault and AP Flow, but we had ways to pass the vendor tables back and forth and pass the OCR data back and forth. So it would show up in a queue, right? But the big difference between the two is, and I'll show you in a second, if I go into the paperless OCR queue, the big difference is this step here. If you needed to train something in Abby and you when you go, went into what they called the verification module, which essentially is the same as this screen here, which is for us, it's up in the cloud. It's the same as this. So where there you had to go into a separate module that's an Abbey module that you had installed. In our case, we essentially OCR enabled AP flow and, and P vault. So now it looks like you stay within it. So that's the biggest difference. The, we agreed that the intent was to keep everything within 
the paperless uh, framework, right, within this platform uh, and as seamless as possible. And so Abby is very powerful. So for those customers that have it, I say, keep it, you know, you can go fine with it. If, if for, they have something that it makes sense to switch to paperless OCR, then you have to make the financial, you know, comparison on what it takes going forward with Abby and the functionality you need versus what it would take to switch that over to paperless OCR. But they're two different Thank solutions. Thank you. Okay, we had another question um, asking about the paperless OCR capabilities um, to extract the purchase order. Uh, someone is asking, will it do the same thing with a subcontract? Good question. <laughs> so uh, when you say subcontract for just kind of just to kind of give you a frame of reference, are you saying if it's a subcontract number on an invoice layout or are you saying it's a subcontract like a AIA, right? G702 form, which is a completely different form. And so if you're saying it's the former, yeah, we had times where we've actually done it, where we said, based on the format of the, fee, the PO number, we know whether this is a job and, or a subcontract. And as a result, we can use rules to populate a dummy line that says, okay, here's the subcontract um, line that we're gonna populate with the subcontract number and the invoice total. And we know the line type is subcontract. Or we could say in this case, because of the format, it's a job, uh, we're gonna populate a job line with the job number and the invoice total. And like I said, it's a job. So we can do that sort of stuff. If you're going, no, I'm referring to it being the detail of the lookup, it's whatever capability in the lookups you have here. If you notice, we can do a purchase order lookup, we can do a subcontract uh, lookup, quick lookup. So that all applies and it can be brought back that way. In okay. this case, we even have receiving ticket. Awesome. Okay. Next, we have a question asking, and this might be our last one, um, asking all of our AP invoices are in the TIFF format, but when we receive emails from vendors, the invoice attachments are sometimes PDF. Does the import functionality convert these document attachments to TIFF? Yeah. So when they come in, right, um, when you do an email import, you can specify what formats you want to accept in the email import. And so typically I have customers check off to accept PDF attachments or TIFF attachments, because either one can come in. And then paperless, when you get it into our system, it uses the internal format that it's gonna use. And then you can store it however you're gonna store it off on the system, whatever you've set it up. So, Either, either of those image formats is fine. Uh, the, the formats I will tend to, when you're using email import, to say exclude is things like a PNG file or a BMP. So they call it a bump or a PNG and some others. Because a lot of times when you get an email, you might have somebody's uh, address, you know, their signature line that might have a LinkedIn logo or a Facebook logo down on the bottom. And I've seen where those get converted, the system, if you don't exclude them, will treat them as a document attachment because they're an image. They are a PNG file format or they're uh, a BMP. And so we just say exclude those so you don't cut those in. But the system can handle whether it's PDF or TIFF and bring it into the system as needed. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Bruce. We appreciate you sharing this information with us today. And I want to leave everyone with uh, some information as well. So if there is anyone who is interested in obtaining a recording of today's webinar, again, uh, locate the Q&A section of today's meeting, and you can drop a message in there. and We'll be happy to get you the information once the uh, recording link is available. Um, also, if you have not already done so, I would invite you to join the paperless community. Please do that today. If you go to your 
um, in, in paperless in your system. And you can go to and click on the community icon there. You can join the paperless community where you can find the archive links to all of our tips and tricks webinars that are available there, as well as some other resources. Um, and as always, if you have any questions, please contact support with any questions that you might have, and we'll be happy to assist. We hope that you have enjoyed today's presentation on paperless OCR, and we hope that you join us again next month for our next tips and tricks webinar. Thank you so much and have a great rest of your day. Goodbye.